Dracula. I seem to have forgotten my glasses in there. We may proceed there, uh, Mr. you are still under oath. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Lordship. Before the interval, Mr. Krauser, we were discussing the, the billboard, <clears throat> which says racism is not the problem. And you had accepted that the billboard was created under your stewardship as the head of campaigns, correct? That's correct. Uh, with the qualification, I was head of that project, yes. Yes. <clears throat> and to be fair to you, you qualify the statement that racism is not the problem. You say there are other pressing issues that require attention, not so. Yes. Now, my proposition to you is that that qualification is a smokescreen. The intention of this billboard, which was put up on the M1, quite a prominent spot, wouldn't you say? Yes, we, we, we chose a very prominent position for Yes, yeah, so a number, quite a number of people would have seen it, and that was the intention, not so. That's correct. I'm saying the idea that racism is not the problem, but that there are other problems that are more pressing, is a misdirection. Because if one reads your qualification, it seems to suggest that what you meant is racism is not the problem, not so. Um, I think I've answered that question. I mean, that is what the billboard says. It says racism is not the problem. Yes, I'm drawing nuances and differences in tone okay. in order to understand what exactly you meant. I'm suggesting what you're suggesting as a qualifier is actually a misdirection. There's an underlying message you're sending. Now, I'm saying for us to appreciate that, you must understand the nuance of language. <coughs> I'm saying... When you say racism is not the problem, but there are other pressing issues, you're in essence saying how this billboard should be read is racism is not the problem. Not so. Um, I think that's... I, I, I don't see any semantic difference if you say racism is not the problem or racism is not the problem. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to to say that both are fine ways to read it. And if you could explain to me more about what the differences that you see, then maybe I can help. Okay. My proposition is this. Racism is not the problem, and racism is not the problem, are semantically different, aren't they? No, they're not. Okay. And you appreciate that semantic difference because deliberately you use upper cases for not and in red. In other words, that's where the focus should be. Not so. We did intend to highlight the word not. Because there's an underlying reason for that. Not so. Uh, there was an underlying reason for it. Yes. Which I can explain. I'll give you a moment. I'm saying had the intention been to simply say racism is not the problem in contrast to other pressing issues, the wording would have been racism is not the problem. But you place emphasis on the word not. In other words, that's the underpinning message. Racism is not the problem. Now, I'm suggesting to you there's a semantical difference between racism is not the problem, and racism is not the problem. 
Um, you're suggesting it to me? Yes. I'm suggesting to you there's a semantical difference between racism is not the problem and racism is not the problem. Uh, I recognize that you are making that suggestion. Care to comment? Well, I want to be that I'll let a friend needs to express what he says the difference is and put that to the witness. I, okay. I can comment. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll take a the break. witness says he can comment. Go ahead. To my mind, uh, the semantic difference between racism is not the problem, where the emphasis is on not, and racism is not the problem, where the emphasis is on the word the, and racism is not the problem, where no uh, extra sign has been used to place an emphasis, that, th that there is no semantic difference, that there might be an emphatic difference where the emphasis lies but that there's not a semantic difference. And I take a semantic difference to mean a very simple thing. If two sentences are semantically the same, then they will be true in all instances and false in all instances. If they are semantically different, there will be some instance where the one is true and the other one is false. So to my mind, racism is not the problem. Racism is not the problem. And racism is not the problem. Those three sentences... If one of them is true, the others will also be true. If one of them is false, the others will also be false. But the emphasis, where you put the emphasis in language, will, will, will communicate something beyond merely that it's true. That's the proposition though, Mr. Krauser. Okay. I'm saying there's a reason why the emphasis is on not, and not on the or is. Because once you change the emphasis of not to something else, then it doesn't carry the message you intend. Not so. No, so there was a reason that we put it on not. It wasn't to change the message. It certainly wasn't to change the meaning. The meaning remains the same. It's my proposition, regardless of where the emphasis lies. Very well. Then let's deal with the article that I'd said you had written, and my learned friend pressed me to find it. And it's just going to be put up now on screen. Um, so because of the difficulties, we can again go to the first page, but we obviously have um, connectivity issues. If you don't mind, what I'll do is I'll read the first page and see if you agree. If not, then we'll go to the top page. Okay, there you go. Thank you. So if you scroll down, keep going, stop there. This would be your name, wouldn't it? Uh, my name appears on the cover page of the report because Black Lives Matter. Let's scroll down. Further down. Again, under author, that would be your name, isn't it? That's correct. So you wrote this? That's correct. Yes. Now, if you go back to the heading under 17, 
where it says category error. <coughs> Under category error, just to give context of what this article is about. The article is about your analysis of Black Lives Matter. And then under this heading, you discuss category error. That's, that's how you've tagged it. And you give your impression of Black Lives Matter. This is what you say. The mistake in Black Lives Matter ideology is not that racism doesn't exist. It does. The mistake is to think more and better racism will help the situation. Following critical ra sorry, do you perhaps want to explain to us what the word CRT mean? Uh, yes, critical race theory is what it stands for. That is a, 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 an academic body of thought or a school of analysis, which was in a sense crystallized in 89, the year of my birth, is it? Um, and which has become increasingly significant in uh, America's academic uh, practice and, yes. uh, and, and elsewhere. Uh, yeah. And my final comment would be that uh, not everything in CRT is original. A lot of it is just making explicit no, that sure. which was implicit. Sure. S sorry, just give me the full citation of that uh, abbreviation, CRT. Critical race theory. Thank you. Just give us a synopsis in literally three lines and no more. A brief synopsis of your understanding of the critical race theory. I mean, obviously, it's, a, it's got racial connotations. I want you to place emphasis on that synopsis on race. Okay. A critical theory is a theory of description which also includes an intention to change the world. Uh, that emerged from Austria a hundred years ago. Critical theories of law have analyzed how legal systems have, without realizing it sometimes, imposed bias or oppression against subsections of society. And critical race theory is a body of analysis about how a legal system can oppress particularly black people even if the words are not written as in apartheid explicitly to oppress black people, the, it, can, it can still happen that way. This Thank is you. This is a central contention of critical race theory. Uh, yeah. There is more, but I will limit myself. But, sorry, the critical legal theory, that's also an American concept, <clears throat> or has its origins among the American scholars, isn't it? It does. I was tracing even further back to the Austrians, but critical theory, as critical legal theory, has been prominent in America for many decades, at least since World War II. And it draws between the liberal conception and the individualistic and communitarian conceptions. That is correct. Okay. Now, when you when you deal with the critical race theory and Black Lives Matter movement, you say, following CRT, BLM aims to elevate the status of the black race through its black joy and black excellence and other programs. I use quotations because when you discuss black joy, you do this. And when you say black excellence, you do this. BLM advocates aim at reinforcing the practice of reputational pooling, whereby an individual status is linked to that of another by emphasizing the achievements of top black performers and insisting that this should inform how one should relate to the black people more generally. BLM also reinforces reputation pooling by insisting that if one black person is killed by the police, all black people could be killed by the police. BLM also calls for racial codes of conduct. For example, that white people should guard black outs, wherein only black people are allowed to bask, contemplate, and dance. 
Now, we could dissect this premise by premise to conclusion as to what the underlying message is. But I think it would be a fair summation to say you are critical of the ideology of Black Lives Matter, aren't you? Yes. And that sums up and runs off quite nicely the suggestion I want to make. I will, in due course, this is not the debate I'm going to have with you because it's a legal one, but I'll submit in due course that construed properly, your billboard suggests that racism is not the problem. I will also suggest that linked to that and consistent with that idea is your thought that Black Lives Matter movement has what one would call deficiencies and you are critical. Let me phrase the question, let me put the proposition to you. Your view of Black Lives Matter is that it's a fallacious concept, is it not? No. No. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is what I proposed to you earlier on, which is that the ideological flaws with the concept of Black Lives Matter. The way you phrase that, the concept of Black Lives Matter seems to be, on a plain reading, if you just said, what is the concept of Black Lives Matter? It would be the idea that a person's life matters who, where that person is black. And there's no flaw with that concept. That is a correct uh, description of things. When you say Black Lives Matter ideology, then, or as I refer to it, I'm referring to a broader set of claims, merely than the claim that Black Lives Matter. And in that broader set of claims, which is put forward by the BLM network, global network, which is a, an institution, as well with that name. Okay, let's so put it this way. I see the difficulty. There I have, uh, yes. There I criticize. I see the difficulty. Let's, let's, let's put it in short then. Let's, let me quote you. Black Lives Matter aims to elevate the status of black race through its black joy and black excellence and other programs. That's what you say. Yes, at the start of that section, yes. I say BLM ideology. And so in all instances, I expect the reader to, to take that to mean following CRT, following critical race theory, Black Lives Matter ideology aims to do, as you say, elevate the status of the black race through its black joy, black excellence, and other programs. And those you can see on the website of the Black Lives Matter Global Network. Fine. Sorry, Mr. Siboto, can you ask your attorney to close the section dealing with notes? It will give a, it will enlarge, yes. That, that should be better. Can you see, I could see you I'm, battling a bit. It's easier to see now, thank you. Mark. Okay, thank you. Okay. That's not where I am. I'm not reading the first sentence where it says ideology. I'm reading following from CRT. Forget following whatever it follows. The premise is this. Black Lives Matter aims to elevate the status of the black race through its black joy and black excellence and other programs. That's the assertion you make. I make that assertion yes. with the understanding that the reader will take BLM to stand for the ideology. It doesn't matter, does it? BLM ideology, BLM movement, same thing, is it not? Um, it's close. It's not exactly the same. And the, the reports, this report is quite long. It goes into the differences between those two. Fair enough. Now... The difficulty is that there seems to be this constant theme, at least as far as you are concerned, under the umbrella of the IR, that firstly, in my view, and you'll find a different description of it, diminishes and almost mocks the idea of racism. And specific reference is made to the point of the billboard. I've suggested to you what I think and make of that billboard. The second theme, which is consistent with that, is this whole idea that there is this movement to deal with racial tensions specifically against black people, yet again, 
In response to that movement, this is what you sum up BLM to mean. I will suggest that it means far broader than that simplistic and rather oversimplified sense of BLM. Those are propositions you do not have to respond to. Like I said, it's going to be my legal argument. May I respond to that? Of course. Uh, to the first assertion that I diminish and mock the idea of racism, I reject that categorically. I have frequently been called upon, and I consider it uh, an important duty to comment on racist behavior that has been made public in South Africa. And I have condemned that behavior in no uncertain terms, um, as I think is necessary. Because where instances of racism occur, this is a very serious matter that I take very seriously, that we at the Institute take very seriously. Uh, as to the second assertion uh, that my summary of BLM ideology is oversimplified, I reject that and I, and I, I would just rather like to point out that, that one sentence or maybe two sentences of, of my report have been quoted here. And of course if one only looks at one or two sentences, one will only get one or two sentences worth of analysis. I start this report at length describing the good intentions of BLM ideology and the movement and very important positive parts of its history. Uh, and I could go further, but I will, I will leave it there. And in keeping with the assertions that I've made, and I'm suggesting there's a pattern here on how you report on race issues. The first issue I take or rather, the first thing I take issue with is the billboard itself. It's inflammatory. You knew how to be understood. Nonetheless, you proceeded. The second is the issue of this article, which we've just gone through. The third is your position on the concept or the policy of expropriation without compensation. Again, at the face of it, it appears to me and this is the proposition I would like you to respond to. It appears to me that consistent with these issues that I've raised, again, you take a posture that justifies why land reform through expropriation without compensation is fallacious. Not so. Um, I would like to answer that question, but I'm, I apologize. You did put something to me. You said that I knew how the billboard, you said that the billboard was inflammatory and I knew how it would be taken. And you've responded to it and I said I'll take it further in legal argument. Now I'm at the I, that point. Okay, I, sorry, earlier you'd said that, it diminished, that I in general diminish and mock the idea of racism. Uh, you hadn't said anything about inflammatory or about how it would be taken. So I thought I might just say something about how it was taken. Which is that two people complained um, to the advertising regulatory board that they found it offensive. And we submitted ourselves to their jurisdiction. I was making reference to this earlier with regard to the press council, that if someone makes a complaint through an independent council, we might submit ourselves to their jurisdiction. In this instance, I submitted, I said, please, we would like the Ombud to uh, hear this out, gather whatever evidence they need, and decide whether this is offensive or inflammatory in any way. I made that submission, and I had no legal duty to do so, because I was confident that it was not inflammatory or offensive. Moreover, although two people complained, and although I was chastised on a radio station by one radio host, who misrepresented what it said, who said that it says racism is not a problem, which I would never say, and is categorically incorrect. Uh, nevertheless, over a thousand people uh, showed their support by becoming friends of the Facebook page Racism is Not the Problem and uh, anyone is available to see who those friends are and to see that it is a very racially diverse group of people who understand that when racist incidents do occur that is a problem but that it is not the national problem it is made out to. Um, in terms of the, the, the last question that you asked me I didn't 
quite understand it, if you could just put that last bit to me again, I'd appreciate it. And as for the advertising... Just hold on, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. You say, and I think this is page 181 of Mr. Rhodes' book, let me just confirm, <clears throat> it's 169. Do you have a copy with you? I do. And while you get your copy, I just want you to have in mind that you've just said that the point of the billboard is that racism is not an issue made out to be. Not so. I don't know what that sentence means. Well, I'm, I'm trying to verbatim repeat what you just said. You said in defense of the billboard, all you're trying to discredit is the idea that racism is bigger than what it is suggested to be. And I'm saying in trying to rephrase it to you, or rather to say it back to you, I'm trying to verbatim quote what you said. You'll correct me if I'm wrong. I understood you to be saying racism is not an issue made out to be. No, I said racism is not the problem that it's made out to be in yes. the public square by politicians and some leading voices. In fact, yeah. you said racism is not a problem. I beg your pardon, my lord. I said that on one radio station I was chastised yes. by someone who misrepresented the billboard. That person, that radio host, said.